The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. Let me just get this over to the side. Yep. Okay. So we've got the Dow down 272 on this Tuesday, the very first day of October, a new month. We we'll look at the candles in a moment for the for the month of September. But look at the Dow. Dow's down 281 to 42,046. So using uh, Chapman Wave notational technique, uh, the instant restart that we're talking about as a potential start to look very much like uh, it, it's not the usual pattern that I look at. It's still in place, but it's really succumbing to a lot of selling pressure. So we've got the uh, six highest PPF in the chat. Remember, oh, I should do this right now because look, you always get new people. Oops, don't do that. Oh, what did I just do? Give me one second to fix this. Uh, cancel. Thank you. Okay. Um, we'll go up to this one right here. So in the Chapman methodology, we try to identify the lowest low bar. Remember, we got the exact low on August the 5th um, uh, in the Dow. Um, and then what we do is we go, we count each successively high peak. And as long as that starting point is not taken out even by one penny, it means you just alphabet alphabetize sequentially higher uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down, the alphabet through G. A, first peak, B is the second peak, one penny higher than B starts legs, C, one penny higher, lower than C, makes a peak C, and then we go to a D. Fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. We can go to E, F, and G, but D is where, uh, that's where a yellow light flashes just for a moment to say, okay, just be a little careful here, you don't have to change your opinion, but be a little careful. All right, so that's the objective. So what did we do? We went to peak A, peak B, peak C, pull back sharp, even by the conflict of whether or not there was a, um, a phantom peak. But in the meantime, it turned out to be a peak C. And then we ran high, and I said, this cup and handle formation is one that I, I, I like least of all, unless you get it exactly right, because if you get a little late, the price invariably comes back into the handle. Well, that's the impression that I've got using that particular technique, all right? The other technique is look at this inside track repellent zone. Green line, parallel pink line. It just makes this very narrow little channel that says, wow, when prices get up to that level and you get a very sharp pullback, you've got to be careful. Well, we've gotten to that level, went above it last week. We closed a fraction above it. And this week, we're inside the candle going to the bottom line of the pink nine-period moving average. If you look at the stochastic at 90%, that's fabulous. If you look at the on-balance volume, that's great. If you look at MACD, that's really good. Not as good as it was way back at that peak D back in March. However, it's still very strong. If you look at the nine period over the 14, that's all outstanding. So it has to be price that determines the trend. And as I look at it, if there is a close below yesterday's low, of 41,000, I'll give you the exact figure, 41,929.07. A close below that level suggests that there is going to be further weakness in the Dow on the daily chart. You don't have to worry about the weekly chart because I see it as being so strong that unless there's a massive pullback below 40,000 in this particular phase right now in October, and I warn subscribers, October, I am anticipating the first week of October is going to see some weakness. Therefore, we've been preparing, so we've taken off all our long positions. We've taken little bits off. Um, we, actually, we did go long a position yesterday that, that's been fabulous, but it pulled back enough to exact uh, exact point that I said, I think we can go long uh, yesterday and the day before. For those who missed the previous day, we, we uh, had a secondary entry just fractionally above it. And that held, that had a really nice turnaround because it's in a different sector altogether to the to the, what the market's looking at. Okay, so with that said, I'm we've got we are short. We're short the S and P. 
because I didn't really want to touch my three times long UDOW, uh, but we did take profits again in the UDOW, very nice gains from the uh, from the lows of August. Now what we're looking at is, you see this candle right here, this big red candle, down down six, uh, S and B down 65. And I spoke about this for a few days. I said when there are four hiccups to the upside in the on balance volume, be careful because very often that's suggesting that there's weakness, that there's an overbought situation, and now there's weakness. So with that said, what we're looking at is yesterday even, I was talking a couple of days now, I've been talking about it and saying, this kind of bumpy action right here in the on-balance volume is a hint, even though the stochastic's fabulous at 92%, just a hint to say, be careful, because something's happening. Because Also, the other thing is the relative strength was weakening. It was still good, but it was starting to weaken. So now we've got the S&P down 67. There's this peak C1, C2, and I usually make that little plus sign acting like a peak D. I always make it pink or red to say, hey, this is the potential. Now, we only we only just got that yesterday. So what happened is we just failed. Look at this. 5767.37 was the high on the 26th of September. 57. Uh, 65.14 was the high yesterday. So that acts like it was almost a peak D. That's one of the techniques that I developed in the Chapman Wave methodology. Gosh, there are a lot of techniques um, that can get you through the Straits of Gibraltar without hitting the rocks. So this is it. So I had an email that said, of all the years trading the market, trying to time pullbacks is nearly impossible, almost a waste of time. Um, I beg to differ, and I'm just going to leave it at that. All right. So this to me, there's if you're looking at almost any indicator, even if you're looking at one to ones, the, the expansion of the Fibonacci, etc. There were very few clues to say that there could even be a pullback here. And even now I'm saying I'm basing it on price and on the Chapman Wave techniques that I have at my command. Could be wrong. I mean, I'm not the market. I'm only trying to follow the market as best as possible and to try to have my subscribers uh, survive all these different uh, selling attacks that occur every once in a while. And that's all the best we can do. Still very long term long, very long uh, in the sense that uh, we've got positions that go back to March of 2020 to uh, the low of October of 2022. Uh, I, I don't want to be uh, touching those. Even have the dollar back from 2018. Look at the dollar. And I mentioned this the other day. I said, I'm watching the dollar very closely. because, And I especially mentioned it yesterday. I said that this particular pattern looks to me more like a basing pattern than a breakdown pattern. There was every opportunity for the dollar to break down. I said, no, if you look at this pattern, I didn't have a chance to draw it in. But I'm drawing it in right now. Here's your Chapman Wave inside track propellant line right there. So this is a zone that says if you cannot push higher from here, be careful because that's going to become a resistance area. So lo and behold, we've got a nice, nice move up. Hey, it's just a move up. It doesn't mean to say, oh, the dollar's going to... Uh, 105. No, it says, look, this is a great move up exactly as the market is looking quite weak. So I'm saying, just be careful here. That's it. I'll be back. Dow's down 340. SB's down 64. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. So let me just go to a couple of questions and we go to all the other uh, industries that I always look at. So Amazon, question about Amazon. Uh, the 9 period moving average is still above the 14. It's sharply down to, no, well, it's just down 2.5 uh, to 183.60. Um, yeah, that 9 period moving average is very close to turning down to go uh, pink. Uh, this is a, uh, a part, I don't think it's a dreaded H pattern, but it's a, a leg B, a gray leg B in the uh, weekly chart with the MACD about to deflect lower and the stochastics at 70%. Monthly charts at peak C, I suspect that it's still going to go to a higher high into the 205 area. But at this particular point, it's digesting gains. Just be real careful. It must hold 180 in the next week. If it takes out 180, that's a problem. It could even go to the 200 period moving average of 173. It needs very quickly to go 191. And I'm not sure I see anything in Amazon online shopping, etc. at this particular moment to say that there's a reason for it to have a very strong rally. Next question was, now let me just get to this. Uh, yeah, ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil, number of people asked me last week whether it was good, and I said, yeah, it's it's in that area that it's, first of all, it's a dividend stock, but secondly, the monthly chart is hold, held very well in a kind of a, it's almost like a cup and handle pattern. In fact, let me just draw in the handle right now. Uh, although I did make a higher high, there's still that pattern that I'm looking at. And with the, uh, is that, I haven't got the updated news but was there some talk of, uh, of an attack on Israel? What is it and who is it? Um, we'll see. Um, so in the meantime, the, the it's a very strong move up 2.28, up almost 2% today at 119.77. Yeah, obviously. And, and the fact that crude oil has moved like this. Remember, crude oil is doing nothing. And even now, when you think about this as a Middle East crisis, going from the, the 64 area, to 69 is not a big deal if it was going, for, and it could still do that, go from 69 to 74, 
then we've got a problem. And that's what I'm watching really closely. And, of course, we've got a potential strike coming up today uh, in the dockyards. Wow, everything's kind of working away uh, at the um, economy right now. is a, a bit of a problem there, right? Next question was, um, now, I have I don't know if I've followed this for a little while. Uh, I'm going to go to it if I can just see it right there. UNFI, UNFI. I hope I've still got it notated. I don't think I how I do. I uh, had it notated. So this is one that we looked at for Dan in the Den. It's trading. It said 21.16, up 4.36. What is this? A United Natural Foods. United Natural Foods. Very good. Oh, I wonder if that one that we had and then I didn't get back in. Is moving. All right. Well, let's just look at this peak C, peak D, peak E in the weekly chart. Everything looks very good. And there you are. So now let's go to the daily. Let me just open this up quickly so that I can be looking at the bigger picture of the daily. So that went to peak F right there back in June, pulls back, has another big rally. And I don't think it took out that left side low. Let's just see, that was a low, so let me just move this. There's your peak F, right at the 200-period moving average. Remember, I made a big deal about the 200-period moving average. It did pull back, and then it hit a low. I haven't updated this for quite a while. Well, we haven't looked at this for months, huh? Uh, 11.88, 11.92. So 11.88 right there on the uh, 9th of July. Then it goes peak A, peak B, peak C. Now, this is really interesting because... I, I've actually made a, uh, I can't say I've made a study of it because I always make a study of this. It is fascinating to me how often you get a move up that's powerful and then it stalls at a peak C. Then what I do immediately is I go back and I say, could there have been a phantom peak? For instance, 1424 on the 18th of July was the high and 1427 was the high on the 19th. Now, I have to then look to see was there a little squiggle in the unbalanced volume or the relative strength there, whatever it is. Yep, there was. So I do this. I'm I'm going back historically. So I'm absolutely 100% correct. Remember, you can't be wrong if you're doing that. But I make a note of it. I say, wow, if I had considered that to be what I call a phantom peak because it was almost a parallel high, and then I go here and I go B, and then I go here and I get C, I get a perfect D, that pull back very sharply. So I'm quite satisfied with that because I'm going back and saying, I want to be correct right now. So correct any, they're not errors because at the time that was your thinking, but these are uh, inflection points that could have alternate counts. Now I've got a peak A right here. I'm very happy about this. And that could be an E slash C, uh, E slash B because it did not take out that original starting point. Remember at 11 point, whatever it was. Um, so I'm calling that E slash C. And now I say, OK, now you have to prove yourself with that 200 period moving average. It uses that as a support under it. It has another peak A and a peak B. And what do we get? We, oops, I should have put that as a B. Sorry, that was a mistake. I get an overlapping wave. And that is powerful. That's that cup formation that in the Chapman wave methodology, if you get an overlapping wave that gets you sharply above the left side high in a C. It says, be very positive about that because you should get to a, a D. The D should come back, retest the lip on the left side. Well, lo and behold, it did that. And then it was tootling around yesterday at the 16, uh, 20, 80 level. Bam, today some news comes out and it's up in leg E. Yeah, so that's that's the whole analysis there, uh, um, Dan. And if Where's the support level? Well, it depends on follow through. If there is a follow through in the next three sessions, even with the market down, I mean, Dow's down almost 300 points, S&P's down 60. If, in fact, this independently is doing its thing and it starts to move, let's just say the high today is at 21.49. Let's just imagine that's the high for the day. But it closes quite nicely at about 20.90 or something. If it makes higher highs for the next two sessions, that makes the middle of this dark black, uh, green candle in the 20.20 20 area 
major support on the shorter term. At some point, it will fill the gap, but it could have a very nice run to the upside if this continues. And the monthly chart is in leg B. So I need to just type this in because I haven't done that. And that is United Natural Foods. Woohoo! United Natural Foods. A very healthy diet, spiking higher, up 4.28 and 21.12, up 25%. Good eye, good eye, good eye. And uh, okay, let's move on now. Uh, let me just do this here. ST. I don't know if this has moved in symphony or in sympathy. ST. LB. Is that correct? No. ST. Oh, no, it hasn't. So the one that we had, Sun Opta, which is organic, non GMO, plant based products, but then we got out, uh, we had that really nice move to the upside. Went to a PG. Uh, over the last few days. Uh, let's see, the Dow is down 322, the SP is down 64. We'll be right back. I will drop some packages. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also getting his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Uh, yeah, so I was asked about uh, APT, which is Air Products and, and I used to know this thing so well. I haven't looked at it for ages. Air Products and Chemicals, Inc. So um, well, I'm not sure what the actual question is. Could I look at it? Um, APD, your opinion to go long. Okay, so I've got this at a potential peak C in the uh, daily chart. Now, it looks like it needs to go a little higher to get to that D. Everything about it suggests that. Just trying to think, what was I looking at? Uh, yes, okay. So this is the uh, other leg E in the weekly chart. And the monthly chart, now this is going to be, this is the pattern that you have to look at. You've got to stretch this open so that you can see it in the big picture. And you see that it's basically in a rectangle formation. Yeah, I could make a case for, let me just put this right here. It did make a slightly higher high, um, and I'm calling that, uh, let's see if that's a peak A. Oh, isn't that interesting? That is an A. So look, within this context, you've got another buy signal right there. I thought, this is so strange. What am I going to call that? But looking at it closer, there it is. There's your A. There's your B. And you've got to get to a, C, a D. And that completes the buy mode. And there's your D. So I'm just going to say, uh, was that Satish? Yeah, Satish. I'm going to suggest keep it on your radar. I, I'm not buying anything right now uh, other than what we did because it was in the healthcare industry um, and that is kind of, I wouldn't say it's independent of the general market, but in a way it's been in its own, on its own trajectory. So I'm just going to say that that's, that's different. And if you're in like ExxonMobil, so what, oh, I didn't finish my thing. Just say ExxonMobil, for those people that are already long, yeah, I would stay long. And what I would do is I would, let me just, I, I need to finish that thought. I'm coming back to uh, APD in a moment, but I didn't finish the thought on Exxon Web. I had a break coming up. So I'm just going to say it's legs at 119.80. Because of what's going on right now, and it could actually turn out to be quite short or long, we just have no idea if you're talking about warfare. But I'm going to say that I would suspect that at this particular point, Iran is not that sanguine about having to go to war. Uh, not that it isn't at war all the time, but in fact, from what's happened over the last couple of weeks, they don't know what's coming up next, right? So they might be talking a good game, but they might not do anything. And if they do something, I don't know if they're going to have an all-out attack because there's, Israel has uh, the radar. There's, they have, you know... The, the Iron Dome is really important. And if there are too many missiles, I don't know if they can handle it. So I'm just saying ExxonMobil is moving on that big spike in oil. But I would say that, and for a number of reasons, I've been saying ExxonMobil going down to the 108 area tends to want to go back up to the 122s. Uh, and then you have to be careful because it keeps pulling back when it makes those eyes. So right now, it has at least another two, three points to the upside. And if it's still holding well, the technicals, look, the stochastic's not yet at 80%. It's at 75%. So the answer to the question is, it's, it's doing very well. And if you are looking uh, now to go along, you can't put the same position on it. It has to be a smaller position only because of the risk-reward. And I would have a trading stop right now of three points if you got in. And then I would say, this is a position you might want to add to, but not yet. Okay. So, okay, with that said, I can go back to ADP. Oh, is it ADP? APD. ADP is something else. APD. ADP is, uh, well, isn't that automatic data processing? Yes. Oh, that's actually quite well. It's moving up $1.15 today. Very good. Okay. So, ADP. APD. Let's get that right. There it is. 
So I'm just going to say, hold on, even though on a purely technical basis, I th- everything about this says that it should go to a D, slightly higher than the high that was made uh, three sessions ago, which we had 30250, wasn't it? 30203. So 30204 begins leg D. I, just for those... Just for clarification, I don't I don't have anything right now that's negative about it, other than that it's pulling back quite sharply today, down 0.88 percent. That's a little bit unusual for it to pull back so quickly, and I'm just saying this is looking very good. Where would I add? Just I have to give it time. Let's look at it again. I'll put it down in my book. I'll put it down. A, P, D. Look at again. And that's all I can say. I don't know if I'd be buying it today. But I do think that everything about it is on the upside. And this is like Exxon. Look, down to the 220 level, it wants to go back to the 320. And this is the bounce that it does in the rectangle formation. So that's what I'm looking at. So what I would do is, if you, if you just want a number, the number right now says is a 295.33. I would say if in the next week it pulls back under the 291.70, well, there'll be a different number, but this is the black 14-period exponential moving average. If it closes under that, I'd have to say, wait a little bit. If it goes under it and then closes nicely above it, i say, okay, now you can start a position, just a trading position. But at this particular point, you've got to be a little careful. Um, okay, now the next question came in. Oh, I was finishing that up. So gold, now this is a fascinating look. Gold, purely a reflex a Middle East play, as far as I can tell, right? Up 25 at 2,684, the high that was made in the 2,707 area three, four sessions ago. I had said, I think that it could be a little bit of a topping action, but uh, it's in play. I wouldn't be, absolutely, I would not think it in, at all of a short position in gold in, in this if, this phase of the market and this phase of the geopolitical situation. But I did think that there would be a bit of a pullback. We did take a little bit off our uh, long gold position. Um, that's the stock that we have. Um, but that's just part of money management. Uh, GDX, uh, look at that. That's not. It's not doing the same thing. This is gold. It is gold. And just think of it uh, that gold is almost independent of the market. Vectors, gold miners, ETF. It's just, look at this. Keep your eye on the right side. That's the monthly chart of GDX. Now look at this. It's just a different pattern altogether, very bullish pattern, right? And it's at the chap wave inside track repellent zone. It's still messing around there. Uh, it looks like it's a leg C. It'll go to, it'll continue leg C if in October the continuous contract goes one point, it doesn't have to be one point, point ten above the 2708.7. As we go to the break, the silver is up. Uh, not as much. That's pretty much what we're going to It's up to 3.8. And uh, it's not quite the same. Well, I think we can hit it back. Up to right. It doesn't stop the bar. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? 
Luckily, you don't have to worry about that. As Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, I, I want to just show this. I did this last night, actually. I just didn't believe it. I put this in, left side, right side, price, time match. And, um... You know, what can I say? The low that was made yesterday in the E-mini at the 10-minute chart at uh, 2.30 in the afternoon Eastern Time at 57, 56.25 ran all the way and it was holding the 200 period moving edge. I thought, wow, what is going to take the market down? I have signals that suggest there should be some kind of a pullback. That was a huge going from uh, the 56.18 area uh, down to... Um, the low today so far of 5739.50 so this is there should be an attempt at least at an oversold bounce but what have you got i'm seeing in the den i know in tiger youtube um people are mentioning here pat says well the dock workers went on strike and refused a 50 percent increase in pay hard to believe and then uh, he goes on to ism down jolts up this is uh, economic indicators um VIX up over 20, let me see what it is, yeah, up, up 2.31 at 19.04. I spoke about this yesterday, what would happen if the VIX went to the 19s. Um, and then I see, Abel says, uh, workers on strike following leaders' orders, unions always get stronger under what, a 46 administration. Maybe unions are running out of time. They have all the leverage, agree, 77 wage percent wage increase, upgrade refused. Well, I, um, I, I didn't keep up with that. I didn't even realize those are the numbers. Anyway, that's amazing. I mean, if we talk about inflation, when you think of all the, all the, um, all the different workers, the Federal Express, if you go all the way through the different unions with the uh, last six to, months to a year um, of the 
the bargaining, I think we're going to have some serious inflation in some areas coming up for sure. Um, just talking about it economically, not talking about the human aspect of it, just the, the economic, economic aspect. Okay, so what we're looking at here is um, high-grade copper. So high-grade copper had a really sharp pullback. It went to a leg D, and that same leg D tumbled um, to a potential peak D today when it went to the four point is it seven six. I can't remember offhand right now. 4.62 high overnight and then it had a red, sharp red candle that was overnight last uh, yesterday and then yesterday's trading had a sharp candle down almost a chap way of red Roman candle it isn't because the wick's too long at the bottom but today it's up a fraction up 0.03 so this is saying to me that high-grade copper on a short-term basis uh, is probably going to digest some gains right here over the next week or so. I, I'm not sure if it's going to. I, this pattern, particular pattern, when it pops up over the previous high and then sharply comes down, says, oops, got a little problem at that level. So that's the 4.70s. Now let's give it to the exact number on the continuous contract. That is on the 5th of July, the high of 4.765. So that, to me, looks like that could be a little bit of resistance, but you've got tremendous support at 4.49 and then 4.43. Those are the levels. And right now it's trading at 4.59. Okay, so that's that's high-grade copper. I wanted to go to, okay, so let's look at the TLT. What happened there? A big spike to the upside. Now it's a little bit less, but it's still up 87 cents at 98.6. Uh, 95, but you've got the nine period moving average turning down pink, and that just says where it is in the next two days is going to be really important. But right now, I have no choice but to put a down arrow at that peak E and suggest to you that this is in a sell signal, not yet confirming a sell mode, but very close to it. If it comes back down to the uh, 97s, that's going to give us a sell mode. Right now, it's just on the cusp, hasn't done it yet. Possible peak, yeah, it is a peak D in the weekly chart. Only a leg B in the monthly chart as it tries to rally so that yields can finally come down. Let's go to um, oh, three things. Oh, SMHs. The SMHs right now are down 5.73 at 239.64. Yeah, this is the thing that says to me, you've got to be careful. I, I, would, I always hate to go against the semiconductors. Semiconductors lead market because this is the fuel of the 21st century. You had crude oil all the way through the 1900s into the early 20, 2000s. It's still really important, but now you've got something that is perhaps even more important in the usage of, of this is another form of fuel, and that's the semiconductor chips. So I'm not ignoring this, and I'm just saying, oh, it's giving me a heads up to say 283.07 was the all-time high back in, uh, back in July, and here we are at 239, 50, oh, yeah, more, uh, less, just less than 50 points away. Yeah, that's, um, that is a problem. Uh, that's a problem because it got overbought. The next thing I want you to look at here was our questions came in. Oh, uh, DD. So DD is DuPont. is the old DuPont that goes back to the 1920s, one of the few uh, stocks um, that it's not on the Dow. In fact, the Dow right now only has Honeywell as one of the stocks that goes back to the 1920s. I didn't really, I forgot that it went back. That was 30s or 20s. So Honeywell, uh, sorry, DuPont is down 80, at 87.95, down $1.16, made a doji candle peak E. And we're just watching. There's nothing serious right now, but it is a sharp leg E in the weekly chart and a leg F in the monthly chart. And it could even be an instant restart. But what I'm saying is, the chemicals, CC, I believe, CC, uh, uh, that's Shamo's company, that's, uh, that's um, Advanced Performance Materials, Teflon, etc. That's a little different. What was the other one I was looking at the other day? Oh, why am I forgetting it? Was it CCI? No, it's not CCI. Anyway, there was another, no, that's Cell Towers and Fibers. Oh, doing quite nicely. CCI, Crown Castle, A, B, C, D, E. 
and coming back with a cup formation. Let me make a note here. CCR, there are some stocks that are moving very nicely against the grain. Up, that is. All right. I can't remember what the other one was. The chemical company. Um, yeah, it's interesting that a Raytheon, mm -mm, look at Raytheon, breaking out to a new all-time high, and it was holding really well over the last uh, week or so, making that cup formation. That should have been a heads up that we've got something going on here. This is a very strong move, up 2.32. Archie X is a symbol, 123.48. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So heating, heating oil's up a little bit, up 0.03 at 2.18. Uh, this is a continuous contract. And then I had a question about uranium. This is interesting. So uh, we, we, we have UEC. Uh, this is Uranium Energy Core. We're back in it again. We're expecting that that peak C would pull back a little bit and then make a D. And then we're going to have to see what happens next. Well, lo and behold, today it popped to the leg D 5.63, just above the previous peak C. Right in the, in the weekly chart, uh, this is the inside track repellent zone in that falling X formation. Uh, and we'll see what happens with uranium. What oh, was the CCJ? Let me just see. CCJ, is that moving higher? Um, a little bit higher. No, it's, it's holding steady. So it can, it's, it's going to be very, uh, this is Kamika call. So let me just sum it up uh, for subscribers to opening call. We've gone very cautious. We've taken, uh, taken little bits off our long positions over the last week. We've been doing that. 
a little bit more today in certain ones. And we're looking to say we are short the uh, a small short position via the S&P. And we're just going to let it play out because everything here suggests I, w I was saying for a little while now that I'm beginning to think that the first week, my timing model says the first week of October should see some kind of a top, maybe the end of uh, um, September going to first week of October. Uh, that's kind of where I stand and we'll see. And I, I, most of the technical indicators are still very strong. So it's going to be a price move that changes things. It's not a technical move at this particular point. So with that said, I'm going to be handing you over. I'm not sure if I lost sound or something like that. But I'm going to handing you over to Steve Rose and great programming in today. I'll be back with Tom later on. And I'm also going to say check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and uh, just very comprehensive look at the markets. Now, am I? There it is. There's the sound. Thank you for being here. Stay tuned for Steve. It should be a great show as always. And I will see you a little later. 